Today, the topic under discussion is the ascending tracts. Now, when we use this terminology of ascending tracts, basically, we are considering the pathways uh, that are taking the information from the periphery towards the central nervous system or which I'll be terming as the head brain for the integration and obviously for uh, a response to occur um, as a result of that particular stimulus that is taken to the central nervous system. Now, what are tracts basically? Tracts are a bit above the fibers or the axons that have the same origin and they also have the same destination in the central nervous system. So the information is basically collected from the periphery and for the final integration and for the final outcome or the reflex action, we have to basically carry this information towards the central nervous system and these tracts or these roads or these pathways are basically considered as the ascending tracts. The word ascending will be used um, and that is basically in response to the tracts that are basically taking the messages from the periphery, collecting them inside the spinal cord and then these fibers are basically uh, moving in the upward direction and that is why we will be constantly using this word as the ascending tracts again and again in our lecture. To simplify things, it's uh, very interesting to give you an example. How does our nervous system usually work? For instance, if I give you an example uh, that you're visiting a forest or you're visiting any safari where you come across and uh, through your visual system, you come up to see a lion standing in front of you. So what will happen? What are the mechanisms that will come into action and how they will play a pivotal role? And what will be the role of the ascending tracts over here? So when you have this visual system and it basically takes up the image of that lion standing in front of you, what will happen that this visual uh, impulse or this visual image is taken as a stimulus and this is carried by the pathways, by some pathways, by some neurons that are stimulated. There is an action potential that is generated and this action potential is being generated and taking the messages towards the final centers in the central nervous system, that is the visual complexes that are found mostly in the occipital lobe. When we talk about the visual systems, as we can see over here, this would be a reflex uh, that would be created through a visual image, through a visual that is in front of you. So this would be integrated in the occipital lobe. So we have different uh, informations and they are basically being carried to the central nervous system and obviously for their integration we have highly specialized uh, brain centers that are basically uh, incorporated in the cerebral cortex. As we just when you incorporate this information of a line standing in front of you it is being carried to the visual cortex in the occipital lobe of the cerebral hemispheres. So over there, their complete information is going to be integrated and your body and your brain is going to sense the danger that is in front of you. So there is going to be a fright and flight response that is going to be created at that uh, spot when you're standing in front of that line. What will happen is that the body will sense that danger. There is going to be a release of hormones. Messages are going to be basically sent back from the higher centers of the brain towards the different uh, organs for the release of the hormones, as well as there is going to be some sort of messages that are going to be sent and integrated. And that's how your motor system, your voluntary actions, they come into play and your muscles are going to be basically activated in this particular response. Uh, 
So over here, when we said there is going to be the sensory input, the visual image is seen over here. And the afferent neurons are basically carrying the information. We use that word afferent for the neurons that are carrying the messages towards the central nervous system or even uh, when we'll be discussing towards the spinal cord as well. We, we would be using the word afferent over there as well. The integration centers, they are located in the brain. So they are basically highly integrated centers uh, relating to even the emotions over there as well as the actions that has to be carried out involuntarily and voluntarily as well. So different organs are basically activated in response to this integration. Now efferent neurons, what is the function of this particular set of neurons? They're going to carry the information from the higher centers of the brain towards the muscular organs and then basically that person uh, tries to escape from that danger situation. And obviously there is a pivotal role of the uh, leg muscles that is going to be played over here and motor output is conducted towards the legs and in response to this complete cycle uh, what happens over here is there is a sensory input and then we have a motor output to it. So the spinal nerve tract fibers for the purpose of study they are going to be distributed or they're going to be classified as the ascending tracts Mainly, they are taking the information from the periphery towards the higher centers of the brain for the final integrative response. And then, we have the descending tracts that are basically taking the information from the higher centers of the brain towards the target organs. The target organs can be the viscera's and they can be the muscular organs as well for the voluntary action as we even saw in this uh, example that we started over here. And then finally, we have the intersegmental tracts as well. So spinal cord has basically different segments. They ha it has different levels depending upon uh, which cervical, which vertebra it is going to be corresponding to. So this uh, intersegmental distribution, the information is also being carried from one segment to the other so that there is going to be an integrative response not only uh, the uh, lower limbs are going to be activated it is also going to be a complete response that is seen as a whole in the person as well for the release of the hormones as well there is going to be the release of the adrenaline hormone so all of this is going to occur in an integrated way rather than an individual way and this is how basically different responses are created in an individual um, it can be in response to any kind of a visual stimuli it can be in response to any kind of a painful stimuli or a heat uh, a hot object when it is touched so even that is going to inculcate all of this uh, response action that we usually see in an individual.